Hi everyone, today we're gonna have a chit chat about how to make up for a failed USMLE step exam. We're gonna have a real talk about real things. First, I want to congratulate my fellow international medical graduates or foreign medical graduates, the so-called IMGs or FMGs, for having the power of will and strength and persistence to follow your dreams to work as a doctor in the United States of America. I know it's painful to prepare for the USMLEs, it's not easy at all, these exams are monsters of exams. They are very difficult, it takes a long time to prepare and I know that, but you just have to keep doing whatever you're doing, don't give up, follow your dreams and eventually you'll make it. And once you make it, trust me, it's a beautiful, rewarding feeling that cannot be compared with nothing else in the world because these exams are so challenging. And once you tackle them, once you pass them with high scores, once you match in residency, you'll be the happiest person in the world. So you failed the USMLE step exam. So now what? Well, you're not gonna lose your cool. Life goes on. Life goes on also for you. You're not the only one and you will not be the last one to fail a USMLE step exam. And regardless of that, match into residency. Don't lose hope, it is possible to match. And honestly, let's be real here. If not everyone, then almost all IMGs and even American medical graduates have one attempt at least, if not more than one attempt. And they do match into residency somehow. So there are ways to make up for a failed step exam, so let's go over them. So let's review the problems and the solutions to these problems related to failed step exam in a systematic way as we always do on this channel. Obviously the major problem with you failing a step exam is getting invited for an interview. So let me tell you how the system works here. Most residency programs have set filters for their candidates. Why these filters exist is because the demand for residency is higher than the spots that are offered each year. For example, if a residency program has 40 spots to offer this year, there are thousands and thousands of candidates applying for only 40 spots. So the program coordinators physically don't have the ability to go over thousands of applications and judge your talents based on your CVs and LORs and research etc. So what they do is they have filters. So these filters are the step scores. Usually the first filter was a high score on step one but now as step one is becoming pass and fail this doesn't matter at all. They will put a numeric filter for the step 2CK. For example, they will put filter past step 1 on the first attempt, let's say for example, and step 2CK score more than 250, let's say, or more than 230. So it doesn't matter that step 1 became pass and failed, the filters have existed, exist and will exist in the future. Some of the solutions to make up for a failed test or to increase your chances of matching is to apply broadly everywhere in the United States. What I mean by that is, for example, if your number one residency is internal medicine and you have a failed step exam, what I would suggest is that you apply not only for internal medi medicine, but for surgery, for psychiatry, for pathology, for whatever else that you can apply for in order to increase your chances of matching anywhere. Remember, once you match in whatever specialty, after that it is much easier to transfer, let's say, to internal medicine, which was your first choice to begin with, than not to match and to apply next year again as an international medical graduate with no US clinical experience. So apply to all specialties regardless of your first choice and after the first year in this specialty if you match for example in psych, after the first year in psych you can transfer, you can apply again to internal medicine and your chances of matching will be higher because you have already one year of US clinical experience which matters a lot when you apply again for internal medicine let's say next year. 
You also want to apply to all IMG friendly hospitals. There are many resources online. You can Google IMG friendly hospitals to apply for residency. Another thing to consider is that not all hospitals have set filters, especially the not so popular and populated states in the United States. So I would suggest that you apply everywhere in the United States because some small programs tend to have more personalized approach to selecting their candidates and if they like you they will actually take time to go over your CV see what you have done what other benefits you can bring to this program and they might call you for an interview even if you have a failed test another thing you want to do before applying if you have a failed test is to make sure that you pass all of the step exams before you start applying for residency including step 3 and I know that Passing step 3 is difficult for people who are not in the US clinical systems, who have not been managing these patients because of the CCS part of the step 3, which is basically managing patients, but online. I know it's not easy, but you gotta do what you gotta do. You have to make sure that you pass all the steps with preferably sky high scores, all right? So you can make up for this failed exam. And passing these steps might take a while. I know that, you know that, everyone knows that. But you have to put in the time. You shouldn't lose your patience. Don't lose your cool. Spend an appropriate amount of time preparing for the test and make sure next time you take the test, not only you pass, but you have a high score. Because the worst thing you can do is rush into the exam fail again and then it's going to be a double whammy you don't want to do this your chances of matching will tremendously decrease if you have two failed tests especially if it's the same test and especially if it's step one so preparing for all the tests and actually passing them might take you years all right but it's okay is it worth it it's totally worth it so take your time and do what you gotta do and the reason why you want to score as high as possible on the following test is because most programs have several filters. They don't have only one filter, they have many filters. For example, one filter can be past step one with this score, but now as step one won't have scores, the filter will be past step one on the first attempt. Now, if you can fail step one and you don't pass this filter, you might pass the following filter, which is, let's say, past step 2 with more than 230. So, imagine, you failed step 1, you don't pass the first filter, but you pass step 2 CK on the first attempt with a score of 270, obviously you will pass the second filter. So your chances of, being, of passing the filter and subsequently being called for an interview increase tremendously. Another thing to consider is extracurriculum activities, all right? So Raj and I were lucky enough to be physically in the United States while preparing for the UCML exams and I was able to volunteer in hospitals. I was able to get into research. As you know, research in US is big time, so it's super important that you get your hands on some research. Obviously, if you want to match into pathology residency, you would like to get involved in pathology research. Same goes for surgery, same goes for internal medicine. But if you can get this specific research, it's better to get in any research than not to get into any research at all. You want to volunteer or observe or shadow, whatever it is, physicians in hospitals where they have residency program. Let's be real here. If you impress the right people in the hospitals while observing, shadowing, whatever you're doing there, volunteering, the chances of you matching with a failed test obviously increase, right? Because now they know you, they know that you're hardworking, they know that you're knowledgeable beyond your scores, beyond your failed tests. So after you get that interview, you have to impress them. Dress to impress talk to impress, ask impressive questions, be impressively friendly, make them feel like you're part of the team already. Also, own to your failed step exam. Tell them the truth, if this is the truth. I underestimated the exam. I was ill-prepared. 
but what you did afterwards is the most important thing that you want to emphasize on. I learned from my mistakes, I did not give up, I put more into my preparation and next time I took the test I scored 270 or whatever you scored, right? This is the most important thing. This speaks about your character and how strong you are and how you don't want to give up on your dreams. You want to show them that this is the type of person you are. You are strong, you learn from your mistakes, you improve and then you move on. If by some chance you don't match, please, please participate in the SOAP scramble. That's why I asked you to apply into many specialties like surgery, internal medicine, psych, pathology, whatever it may be, because I know many colleagues did not match in their first choice like internal medicine but if they had applied for example to surgery during the soap scramble they did match into surgery almost by luck so this is your goal your goal is to match into any residency in the united states after that you can transfer you can apply but your chances of matching with one year behind your back of clinical experience in a residency program in the United States, increase your chances of matching in your preferred specialty, especially if you have a failed test. All right guys, so those were my recommendations on how to make up for a failed test. I hope you found them useful and uh, don't forget, live in the positive, do what you gotta do, keep hustling and keep fighting the good fight for your dreams to match into residency in the United States of America. Good luck everyone and remember there is hope. Stay hopeful. Good luck. I'll see you on the next video.